want to talk to you about memory loss and dementia. This is a big problem. Um, Alzheimer's disease is really just skyrocketing, uh, especially in the Western culture, and memory loss in general, and dementia in general. And uh, I just want to touch a few things upon, about uh, what's really been in the media, what's really been in science, and maybe uh, do a little myth busting for, for everybody. So, um, dementia is the loss of memory. That's the definition of dementia. And the loss of memory over time is called chronic dementia, which um, the most common type that's diagnosed is, um, is Alzheimer's dementia. And then there are other causes of dementia, uh, like Parkinson's dementia and, um, and something called vascular dementia, where people have strokes or many strokes over a long period of time and they can lose their memory. So, uh, you know, up until recently, we didn't think that this was a really a reversible thing. Um, you know, back in uh, 2008, um, there are there were animal studies that looked at uh, brain shrinkage in specific areas in, 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 in rabbits as well as mice, and an area called the hippocampus, which exists in humans as well. It was the first time we found that um, these these areas in the brain had significant uptake of sugar, which means the the brain was insulin resistant, which means the brain is like a diabetic brain. And these existed in these animal models that had higher blood sugars. Fast forward four years, turns out in some human studies and in autopsies that that was still true. So, you know, since then, Alzheimer's dementia has been dubbed type 3 diabetes. And what that means is that um, people with elevated blood sugars, and they don't have to be diabetic or even pre-diabetic, people with consistently elevated blood sugars with higher amount of carbohydrates in their lifetime were predisposed to more Alzheimer's dementia. And this is, a, this is kind of a big wow for the medical community because, you know, what we previously thought was that Alzheimer's dementia um, had an um, uh, inherited property to it and some protein buildups called tau proteins and, and something called amyloid protein builds up in the brain. And we thought these proteins were, were, were the ones that were causing this, but these proteins may be the ones that are markers of uh, worsening things, worsening uh, 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 inflammation, and worsening insulin resistance in that hippocampus area of the brain, as well as the different areas of the brain. So what does that mean for us? It means for us that dementia may be a modifiable thing. It means that diet can contribute to it. It means that um, we have to look at not just on uh, not just on a scale of hey you know there's some dementia symptoms and just throwing medicines on things and trying to prevent things because there's not a whole lot of good great medicine for preventing dementia but what on the dietary side is going to be helpful you know there are uh, national guidelines looking at uh, blood sugars in the in the elderly especially in the, like the nursing home population and the elderly. And there are some suggestions that maybe the elderly can function at a higher blood sugar level, even if they, um, even if uh, that that blood sugar elevation can potentially can potentially be harmful in one way or another, because um, the the risk of hypoglycemia when you too low blood sugar for these people who are diabetic may have a far worse implication, and that's actually true, and so. When we when we look at the concept of dementia, when we look at the concept of memory loss, so many things factor into it, not just genetics, but dietary-wise, you know. Now we know that sugar is the enemy for a lot of different things, but sugar is also the enemy for, for dementia. Sugar is the, the sugar, and that's why Alzheimer's disease is called type 3 diabetes, and where uh, the brain becomes insulin resistant, just like the body can become insulin resistant. And so the second part of that is that when we when we see people with dementia, a lot of them are what I like to call underrepresented. So a lot of people uh, that I've seen before in the nursing homes uh, don't have a whole lot of family, don't have a lot of support to really uh, to really um, back up their actual complaints. But they may be um, even over medicated. So a lot of medications can mask as d these dementias. So we're talking about genetics and diet and something called polypharmacy when they don't have too many medications. Um, number four, um, a lot of the side effects of the medications may not necessarily be from a whole lot of medication, maybe from one, and there's a huge association with statins and cognitive decline. So statins are cholesterol medicine that we know can decrease something 
in the body called BDNF, which is brain-derived neurotrophic factor. And if people have brain-derived neurotrophic factor that are decreased, they have significant worsening increase in amyloid plaques and tau proteins, and these are associated with Alzheimer's dementia. And so imagine that, right? Uh, another, another one is, uh, you know, I like to call it leaky gut. If people don't like that word, we call it intestinal malabsorption syndrome where the, um, the, the gut bacteria, and there may be overgrowth of fungi or bacteria, um, where the gut is unable to take up certain nutrients that are required for, for brain function. Um, so, and so these are, these are the five factors that we would have to look at closely with everybody with dementia. So if someone comes into my office and, and their family members say, hey, you know, mama or papa have a significant worsening memory over the last period of you know, however long. We look at all five things. Plus, we look at hormonal levels. We look at thyroid as a cause of dementia as well and memory loss. We look at depression. Depression causes something called pseudo-dementia, where it's not really dementia, but the depression symptoms can present as dementia in the elderly. So I think we have to really keep an open eye on memory loss, um, not just in the elderly, but, but in everybody. And you don't have to be old to have dementia either. And so, you know, in us evaluating what memory loss truly is, we look at those five factors, we look at a lot of different things, look at the dietary side, see what, what issues are actually modifiable. It requires a very in-depth discussion with, uh, usually with the patient, or the patient uh, has moderate to severe dementia, usually with the patient and the family as well, uh, to know what everybody wishes are, to know what's really modifiable. So if you have any family members that are suffering through this, if you, if you want to uh, tag them, if they think that this information is valuable, please tag them in uh, below. Uh, we are at the Texas Center for Lifestyle Medicine, so we do evaluate dementia very, very closely. So if you want to make an appointment with us, um, please go ahead and do so. So thank you very much.